What is up guys and welcome to your next set of lecture notes. Today we're going to be talking all about different ways that we can mix and combine matter together. So we've talked about how we can get it in solids and liquids and gases and how we can transfer between those two, some of the properties it might have. Now we're going to talk about some different ways that we can distinguish when we have different types of matter, different types of substances that are mixed or combined with each other. So with that, let's get to the notes. All right, so today is gonna to be all about classifying matter as to what exactly type of matter are we talking about. So we're gonna go through kind of a big flow chart that will look at how do we break down the different types of matter that's out there. And we're gonna be talking a lot about the differences between pure substances and mixtures. So that's kind of, kind of be the focus of the talk today and the focus of the worksheet that I'm gonna have you guys work on. All right, so here is our big matter flow chart. So if you remember from one of the other lectures, I mentioned that matter is essentially a scientific word for stuff. So stuff, particles, material, all that is kind of classified under this big umbrella term of matter. So when we're looking at a piece of matter and we're trying to find out some more about it, one of the things that we might ask is, can we separate it by physical means? Meaning, can we go in there and physically with our fingers or a pair of tweezers or uh, like a colander or a strainer of some sort, can we separate out the different parts of this matter from each other? If we can separate it, if we can get the small pieces and the big pieces away from each other or the metal pieces and the wooden pieces away, then we have what is called a mixture. So we'll talk about this a lot more in a few minutes, but a mixture is essentially just like what it sounds like when we have lots of different types of matter all mixed up together. So there are two major ways that a mixture can break down. We can have what's called a homogeneous mixture, meaning that everything is all equal, all the same. That's what homo, in science, the prefix homo refers to, means same. So homogenous, homozygous, homosexual, it stands for the same thing. If it is not all nice and uniform and equal and even, if there's big pieces and small pieces, different colored pieces all mixed together, then we have what's called a heterogeneous mixture. So hetero is different, it means not the same, and so that's what we have when we have lots and lots of differently sized and differently proportioned pieces in our matter. We'll get to all that stuff a little bit later on. If we cannot separate it by physical means, if it's matter that's chemically combined with one another, then we have a pure substance. So whenever we have just one type of particle, just one type of substance in our matter, that's when it is a pure substance. So if our pure substance is just one single particle, one single piece, no other types of matter mixed in there, then we have, oh, excuse me, I was going the wrong way around. So if we have multiple different pieces that are fused together, multiple different substances that are combined together chemically, that's when we have a compound. And we'll talk a little bit more about exactly what do we mean by that in just a second. If we cannot break it down any further, if this is the one single substance that is in our matter, then we have what's called an element. So an element is kind of our most singular, our most simple, our most basic form of matter. A compound is what you get if you take a couple different elements and chemically fuse them, chemically combine them together. So 
we have mixtures of all sorts of different particles all mixed together and we have pure substances when we only have one type of particle it could be just one single element or our pure substance could be a couple elements chemically bonded to one another so let's start off by talking in a little bit more detail about these pure substances so in both of these pictures we have a pure substance because there are no other types of matter mixed in. There is only one type of particle present in a substance. Over in this picture, we only have these big black dots that are present, right? No other types of particles around. And this other picture, we have, let's see, let's do like a red right. Another single type of particle, only this time, it is these little groups of three particles with two white and one black. So elements are when we have just the one single individual pieces. Compounds are when we have a couple different elements, but they're all chemically fused together. So all these guys are chemically combined, and they're all the same type of particle, right? These are all one black, two white particles. So that's why it's still a pure substance, is because all of the different individual substances in here, they're all the exact same. They're not different from one another. They're all made out of the exact same type of elements, one black and two white. So elements, again, when we just have the one single individual piece, compounds are when we have a substance made out of different elements fused together. So let's talk about these two in a little bit more detail. So element is when we have identical atoms, identical particles down at that subatomic level. So like this pot over here is made out of copper. And if you look down with an extremely powerful microscope, the only thing you're gonna see are copper atoms, just copper, 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 over, over, over again. Same thing over here with these gold bars. These are made out of pure gold, and so there's nothing else that's mixed in there. Copper and gold are both elements. They're both atoms on the periodic table, which is something that we'll talk about later on in the week. And so each of them, there's no oxygen, there's no iron or anything like that mixed in. It's only copper over here, which has a symbol of Cu, and gold over here, which has a symbol of Au. So element is when everything, all of the atoms, all of those individual pieces are exactly identical. Compounds is when we have two or more elements that are bonded together. So two or more. So in a compound, we might get some different properties than the individual atoms. Like, for example, in the case of salt. So salt is a compound. It's made up of Na and Cl molecules, just repeated millions and millions and millions and millions of times. NaCl, NaCl, NaCl. Na stands for sodium and Cl stands for a chloride. On their own, if you have just pure sodium or pure chloride, they can be very dangerous chemicals. Sodium on its own reacts very violently with water. And chloride can turn into a gas that is poisonous. But when we put them together as NaCl, they become table salt, like the stuff you put on your food to make it, give it that little bit extra salty kind of taste. And obviously table salt in normal amounts is not very dangerous for you. 
So when we combine these two different elements into a compound, we turn it into something that's a little bit different than each individual element on its own. Again, this is still a pure substance because the only thing in this salt shaker right here is sodium chloride salt. NaCl, NaCl bonded together. So that's what it means when there's not any space or anything in between them. That means that they're bonded, they're stuck with each other. Just repeat it over and over and over again. So this is a compound. Two or more elements, in this case, one Na and one Cl, that are bonded together. So some other compounds they might be familiar with. Water is a compound. That's when you have one oxygen bonded to two hydrogens. So that's a compound right there because we have different elements. We have H hydrogen and O oxygen, but they're bonded together. So in pure water, you're only gonna have these H2O molecules floating around. Carbon dioxide is CO2. So one carbon bonded to two oxygens. Again, same thing, two different elements bonded together make a compound. Uh, ethanol is probably one that you might be very familiar with. This is the alcohol that is in beer and wine and liquor and stuff like that. And so this is another compound. There's two carbons, five hydrogens, and then an OH group on the end. It looks something like this. Carbon attached to a carbon with one, two, three, four, five hydrogens, and then an OH group right here. Again, multiple different elements, but all bonded together, and that's what makes them compounds. Still a pure substance because if water or if carbon dioxide is the only gas that we have in an area, then it's still a pure set of carbon dioxide gas. That's the only particle, the only compound that we have in that area. Now, if you take a bunch of compounds, and combine them all together. Don't do anything to make them chemically bond with one another, but just kind of throw them all together into a glass or a jar or something like that. You might end up with a mixture. So a mixture is whenever you have two or more pure substances that have just been combined together kind of randomly. So you have lots of different particles, multiple different particles, that are all mixed together, hence the name. So unlike with our pure substances where we only had a single black dot or we only had this black and white compound, now we have all together a black dot, this black and white compound, this double white element over here, and then repeated throughout our mixture. So lots of different particles, different pure substances that are all mixed together. They're not chemically combined with one another. They're just kind of floating around all within each other. So within our mixtures, we can sort of classify them into two different groups, whether or not they're very evenly mixed or if they are very unevenly mixed. So if they are very evenly mixed, we call that a homogeneous mixture. So everything is nice and even and equal.
in a homogeneous mixture. Okay, so we're just gonna fix that out and write a better version of equal. right there again that's how important it is so even equal distribution of all of the different components all of the compounds and elements that are in a homogeneous mixture are totally evenly spread throughout the whole mix generally this happens when the particles are very small so they can kind of mix with one another very evenly and don't get too clumped up Particles will never settle, meaning that you won't get a whole bunch of particles kind of falling to the bottom of a homogeneous mixture. They'll all be totally suspended within one another. So think about like a saline solution or eye drops for your eyes, right? Every single drop of that eye drop should have the same amount of water and saline and medicine to help kind of get the redness or the dirt or whatever every single drop from the beginning of the bottle to the last one that you squeeze out a couple months later should have the exact same mixture of chemicals because it is a homogeneous mixture. It's totally even and totally equally spread throughout the entire mixture. There's no large amounts or small amounts of water over here and salt over here and medicine over here. It's all even and equal. Other homogeneous mixtures are things like Listerine, um, so like mouthwash that you use in your mouth. Again, all of the water and mouthwash and alcohol that's in there is all completely evenly mixed so that each swish of mouthwash that you get should be the same. Vinegar, so distilled white vinegar, is another homogeneous mixture. It's all the same amount of water and acetic acid is the name of the substance in vinegar that gives it the kind of acidy vinegar smell. So that's all completely distributed, right? Every single cap full of vinegar should have the same amount of vinegar and water mixed together in there. Coffee, so liquid coffee is a homogeneous mixture, right? Because as we put the water through the ground up beans, it got all of those compounds out of the beans. We use that strainer in order to keep the beans away from the cup. And so if it's just liquid inside of your coffee, then you have a homogeneous mixture. Every sip of coffee that you get should be the same as the last sip. For a non-liquidy version, we can think about peanut butter. So peanut butter, smooth peanut butter, I should mention, smooth is also a homogeneous mixture. So every single scoop of peanut butter should taste the exact same as the last one. There should be even amounts of peanuts and sugar and oil in each scoop of your peanut butter from the store. So since it's all completely evenly spread, evenly distributed, we can call it a homogeneous mixture. Now, what if you're somebody who thinks that smooth peanut butter is just okay, but you really like chunky peanut butter. You really like getting those big chunks of peanuts in your peanut butter. In that case, you wouldn't be dealing with a homogeneous mixture. You would have on your hands a heterogeneous mixture. So, chunky, peanut butter would be a heterogeneous mixture. This is when all of our different components are uneven. It's not a nice even spread of all of our different substances and elements and compounds. It's all kind of unevenly just mixed and smashed together. So maybe the particles are all really clumped together like in our chunky peanut butter, you'd have these big chunks of peanut all throughout that aren't totally evenly mixed into your peanut butter. Some areas might have a lot more peanuts. Some areas might be relatively peanut free. 
So it's not even and not equal. So like granite, like people really like those granite countertops for their homes is a heterogeneous mixture. You can see, even though they're really small, there's all these different little black, white, and gray dots, and it's not completely evenly mixed and separated. Some areas have like, there's a bunch of black dots right around here. This area is mostly white and gray dots. There's not that many black dots around. And then here, they're kind of all mixed together. So we have this very uneven and unequal distribution of our, in this case, our minerals and the rock that create granite. They're not totally even and equal. We have a different, a random mixture of the different parts of our minerals. And so that gives us our heterogeneous mixture, not even, not equal. So other kind of good examples of heterogeneous mixtures include things like a salad. So here we have strawberries and blueberries and some uh, maybe lettuce or spinach with some almonds and maybe some mango. And then there's probably a little bit of dressing drizzled around the top, maybe some uh, cheese or something right there. All of these different components of the salad and each bite of salad that you get is not gonna be the exact same, right? Sometimes you get a blueberry, sometimes you won't. Sometimes you'll get a big scoop of the ranch dressing that's on there. And sometimes you'll get some pieces that barely have anything at all. So that's why it is not evenly mixed. That's why it is not homogeneous. It is heterogeneous. It's not equal, it's not even. You're gonna get a different scoop of salad every time. Same thing with our zesty Italian dressing over here. You can see we've got these big chunks of, I think it's garlic and red pepper and some peppercorns and salt that are all floating around in this kind of oily dressing mixture. So since we have these big chunks, chunks these big clumps, of different particles, in this case food particles, that makes it a heterogeneous mixture. It's not all totally evenly mixed and the same. Some squeezes out of the bottle, maybe you'll get a little bit more uh, red pepper, sometimes you might get a little bit more garlic. You're not getting the same thing each time, and so that's what makes it a heterogeneous mixture. Same thing with something like soil, right? So if you just scoop down into the dirt and pull a big piece of dirt out of your, into your hands. It's gonna have some grass mixed in. Maybe it'll have some of this kind of dark topsoil and then some lighter kind of clay soil down at the bottom. And then you've got all these little rocks that are combined in there as well. So again, you're gonna have a random mixture of rocks and dirt and clay and grass in that big handful of soil that you picked up. So it's not all completely evenly combined and mixed. It, is a random mixture of different parts. Some areas have a lot more of one thing than the other. Some th areas have a lot lower. And that's what makes it a heterogeneous mixture. It's not equal and it's not even. You have this random combination of different amounts of substances in different places in our mixture. So just to kind of review everything, if we have different substances combined together, that if we wanted to, we could go in and separate out into different pieces, we have our mixtures. So we have multiple different compounds and elements all mixed, all combined together. If everything is totally equal and even, then we have our homogeneous mixture. If it is uneven and clumped up in different areas, then we have our heterogeneous mixtures. So our mixture was two or more substances. If we do not have two or more substance, if we only have one substance,
then we have a pure substance. That's the only substance that is in there. If it is a couple different elements that are chemically combined together, like something that looks kind of like this, we'd have a compound. If it is just one single atom that is present, then we have an element. They're both pure substances because this is the only substance that is present in our matter. But if there are compounds there that are made up of multiple elements fused together, that's different than if we just have the one single element present. So that is our notes on the different types of matter. I know it's a lot. It can be a little bit confusing to kind of wrap your head through. Just do your best to remember that our mixtures are when we have multiple different substances all combined. Homogeneous means nice and even and equal. Heterogeneous is when it's not equal. There are big clumps in different areas. And then our pure substances is when we only have the one type of matter present. Maybe it's a compound made up of a couple different elements fused together, or maybe it is a element that's just the one single pure element on its own. So in order to help you to kind of work and think and figure out this, the worksheet that I posted has kind of some more explanation on the front of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's see, this one, and here we go. So our worksheet for this week on elements, compounds, and mixtures kind of runs you through the different types of matter that we were just talking about. So you have some elements, you have some compounds, and you have a mixture of different elements and compounds together. Over here, we have an example of a homogeneous mixture where we have lots of different types of substances. That's how we know it's a mixture, but they're all equally distributed. There's not more of one substance in one corner versus another corner, and they're all about equally spaced apart from each other. In our heterogeneous mixture, we have the same types of substances as we did before, but now, all of the black dots are sectioned off in this corner. All of the white dots are kind of clumped over on this side. And all of that compound of the black and white together is thrown into the middle here. So that is not even and not equally spaced, which makes it the heterogeneous mixture. So for the actual work that you guys will have to do, that's on the second page of the worksheet here. So there are five different pictures that you're gonna to have to look at. One, two, three, four, five. And for each picture, I want you guys to tell me something, two different things about the image. So first, I want you to tell me if it is a pure substance, a homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture. That's what's gonna go on the first line up here is this is a pure substance, a homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture. On the second line, you're gonna tell me whether or not it has elements, compounds or both. So you're gonna look at a picture and say, is there only single matter elements that are present in here? Are there compounds, so two or more elements that are bonded together, are any of those present? Or are there both elements and compounds in here because it is some sort of mixture? So again, first line is, is this a 
pure substance, homogeneous mixture, or heterogeneous mixture. Second line is whether or not there are elements present, compounds present, or if both are present. And you'll do that for each one of the five pictures here. Substance, pure substance or mixture, composed of compounds, elements, or both. Hopefully that helped you guys figure some of this stuff out. As always, please feel free to reach out to me through text, through email, or come into the office hours on Zoom if you have any questions. Once you're done with your worksheets and gotten your answers all written down, remember that you can upload them to the Google Classroom, text a picture of them to me, or email me a picture as well. Please let me know if you have any questions. I know this is probably gonna be one of the trickiest subjects that we covered this year, because there's a lot of very similar wording going on. So please reach out if you have any questions. Um, but for now, good luck, and I will see you for our next lecture in a few days.